Um, it's always a pleasure coming to Malaysia, and of course, it's I felt quite ecstatic today, uh, meeting my, the most important people who has been part of my educational journey, my. Um, Dr. Lee and Dr. Nasni, who's with me in the panel, who has actually uh, one of the best influences in my educational journey. So thank you very much again for Bibas Dengue for inviting me to this conference. The study that I'm going to be uh, presenting today is entitled Determinants of Vector Density for the Development of an Integrated and Collaborative Approach to Dengue Control in the Philippines. Next slide. The overgoal of the National Dengue Control Pro Prevention and Program is to reduce and eliminate breeding sites of mosquito vectors in the Philippines, basically by um, doing the larvae siding and the like. And then the local government code mandates local government to implement this measure supplemented by the different administrative orders. And responses to dengue problem is not, however, effective because of several factors that has to be taken into consideration. And um, traditionally, we've been using larval indices or the stegomyia indices, but we're looking into the use of pupil index as an application if it has epidemiological significance in terms of controlling dengue. So basically, we have these research questions in mind. What pupa density or vector density level, levels exist at specific points in time related to the potential dengue transmission season? Or we're actually looking for a kind of threshold level which would show um, direct epidemiological significance during the occurrence of epidemics. So I think my presentation will be a good prelude to the rest of the methods which will be later presented by my um, former advisor, Dr. Nasni, uh, later. And then a, a, a set of other determinants includes what household and community factors are correlated with pupil density and goes with it will be ecological determinants, including climate, the availability, infestation, and quality of breeding sites, and feeding opportunities that affect pupil density. And what social determinants of public, such as public service delivery, waste management, community attitudes, and household practices would relate to the ecological situation that would help improve the control of dengue in Muntinlupa City. And the last one would be, what would be the factors that will determine the actual performance of public services, including vector control, water supply, and waste management. So in this study, we'll try to uh, put together as, as comprehensively as possible what would be those determinants which that would affect control of dengue in terms of vector density because during that time we know that vaccine is not yet available so it's still vector control which we relied on. So the objectives of, of the study would be number one is to understand the ecosystem related biological and social determinants of dengue for a community-centered ecosystem Intervention directed at reducing vector control immature habitats through inter in intersectoral actions. So what we want to develop here is a community-based control program. And for the phase, two, phase one, we tried to describe the ecosystems in terms of vector ecology, social, in, in terms of social behavioral context, and vector co pro control programs and activities. And we further want to analyze the relative importance of the, these ecobiotic social determinants associated with different levels of vector density, and to identify interventions in the end which will be quite appropriate to the ex ecosystem being characterized, which is the ecosystem I'm referring to is the Muntinlupa City. Muntinlupa City is the um, place where our research institute is actually located. So there's another phase to which is actually after looking, after finding specific intervention, we want to assess them 
Through process analysis, community acceptance, cost, and real-life effectiveness of community-based and directed ecosystem to reduce vector density again, and to integrate the adopted intervention into city programs. So if we have, um, if we found a, a number of intervention, we want it to be accepted and be part of the uh, city of Muntinlupa control program and to recommend and modify the adopted intervention strategies if it has impact on the national dengue control programs, if it has something to do with the national policy for the further control of dengue in the Philippines. So we follow this conceptual framework that um, de dengue vector density is actually affected by several other factors. The first one will be social and ecological factors, which will com consist of population density. Uh, population density, and then we have households in the community. We have vector ecology, which is a major part of vector, of vector density. Uh, for the control of vector density, it, which includes climate, um, availability, accessibility, on, and some breeding sites purposes. We have also vector control intervention, which goes a long way from the most common one, from surveillance to the use of insecticides, to the knowledge and practices on, on how the communities would behave. And of course, all these factors would relate with reference to vector density on the, it, its impact would be on the dengue transmission. The higher would be the vector density, then the, the possibility would be the higher of dengue transmission causing infection and resulting in the occurrence of the disease. So to proceed with a sampling technique, we divided Muntin Lupa, we divided the uh, uh, community into two separate um, entities. The first one, we divided it whether it has high dengue or low dengue incidence. So we have here high dengue incidence, barangays. Barangays are villages. This is the smallest um, component of the political system in the Philippines. And then we divided into either high crowding or low crowding for both of the high dengue incidence barangays and low incidence barangays. And the the, the separation was based on the average dengue cases incidents from 2003 and 2005. And how do we separate them as high crowding and low crowding? We look at the aerial view of bar the barangays using Google, which I will be showing Google Maps, will I, which I will be showing you late, later. And we have produced random grids to take three clusters from each of the of the different cat categories of the barangays. And the last one would be, we'll do random sampling for a total of household for which we took 100 samples, households for each of the community for all of, for the four different types of um, densities and um, crowding pattern. When I say crowding, it means density of people. The higher, hi, uh, high crowding, which, which means high, people density and low crowding, less people in a place. So it, it actually looks like this. So we produced a grid. So if we see in the Google map that there, these are, so how would you categorize this one if we put a grid in here? Is it a low crowding or high crowding community? Definitely it's a high crowding one because we all see roofs and houses. So if we see greens like here, towards this area or over this area, we consider that a less crowded community because of the less houses and, and the availability of greens, which is seen from the top, from the aerial view. So we selected uh, six uh, candidates uh, communities. And this is what we did. So obviously this one will be low, low density community and this although there, there are no grids here, but we divided into uh, the grids per hectare, which means that we have 100 meters by 100 meters a square each. And from there on, we continue the characterization. So we did entomological surveys in private and public spaces. We look at after the water holding containers. 
Its container type, the water type, the usage, and frequency of usage. Its location, whether it's shaded or not, and estimated the actual and potential volumes of leads. Uh, we look at the lead, if they are covered and the presence of larvae in pupa in all the containers for, for the six um, communities that we have visited. And larvae and pupa are collected and reared and species identified. So this is very common for the entomologists. We, we did uh, interview schedule. We ge uh, geographically use GPS to map up all the houses that we visited. And we use this method to, to collect for the larva. This is called pipe net sweep sweeping method, which was developed by Nax and Tunlin. Um, we, co we collected them, brought them to the laboratory, grow them into adults, and then later on identify whether it's Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. And then we've created a record and summarized it in, in our data. For furthermore, we do knowledge attitudes and practices. And we had that questionnaire which would provide us the, the social demographic characteristics, which includes dengue experience, knowledge on dengue, such as the sources of information, disease transmission, the types of breeding sites and the control practices, including the programs. And we further verify it by doing focus group, group discussions, which involves knowledge on dengue, dengue control program, baranga health workers, community activities and participation in water, ma water management. Inter interviews with community leaders and program managers will also, were also done. And and the last one would be observation on the actual control intervention being done within the community. So this is the process that we did. So the, for, for the cluster background surveys, we look at the housing condition and what its probable association with, with regards to transmission. We try to categorize the, the, the function of the houses, whether it's residential, the distance between houses, buildings, and the areas which, and gardens which occur in a particular cluster. We look at the vacant lots, if there are possible breeding sites present in there, the public spaces in, for leisure and adjacent areas, roads, tire capping areas, waste disposal, public buildings and facilities, and the recent vector uh, activities. So this is actually the, a sample of a community. This is the, uh, sorry, this, uh, another one. So if you look at the distance, the, 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 the houses are interconnected with one another. The distance is about 0 0.5 the, to, to about less than a meter and the, the road is less than, uh, less than a meter also if you look, look at it. And if you look at another site, this would be what you will see in the, in the uh, high density dengue areas. And if you look on the other hand, on the low density populated areas, this is, quite, this is a difference. So th there will be good houses, nice lawns, and um, they will have trees around. And these are the sample of, samples of the public spaces which we found. And there are recreational activities such as um, basketball courts, of which in most instances there will be breeding sites around here that we found, that which I will be showing you later in the types, in the types of um, uh, containers which are found in the public spaces. Okay. So of course the garbage which is not so good to see. So with regards to the results, the density of population in greens, it states here that the socioeconomic characteristics of the population, the housing condition, and the mean distance between houses were similar among clusters among within crowding. So those, uh, if they are in highly crowded condition, the socioeconomic characteristic, the housing conditions are similar. Greens and gar gardens can be found, found, as you can see, from the less crowded clusters. And the defined public sp spaces includes the, the common recreation for barangays, basketball courts, multipurpose halls, schools, markets. Uh, however, in the clusters where we examine, there's the absence of cemeteries, jetties, and cinemas acro across all the clusters that we've been to. 
So with regards to the basic infrastructure and utilities, there is a regular solid waste disposal and the frequency of collection varies from once to thrice daily. This is across all the cluster, from high crowding to low crowding, high density and low density clusters. And electricity are, is actually available to all household, except that in high crowding clusters, they have usually illegal connections. Cluster near, near Laguna Lake, because um, Montelupa City, on, its, on the southern side of it is Laguna Lake, there is no piped water supply or it, the water supply is inadequate, and in less crowded cluster, irregular or even piped water supply deep wells are common in water delivery. So in short, in this um, communities, communities that we visited, number one problem is the source of water until now. And uh, community activities includes with regards to dengue control includes cleanliness drive and homeowners meeting, land rights and ownerships because they, there's, most of them are actually informal settlers. And uh, they're doing fogging by request. So this is actually the result of our first larval survey conducted in 2007. If, if you look at the high dengue incidence, high crowding, grouped accord, these are actually the villages. High dengue incidence, low crowding, low dengue incidence, high crowding, low dengue incidence, and low crowding. It's only this, this one, which is high in dengue incidence, which has high crowding, which showed the higher uh, pupil per person index, which ranges from 0.44 to 0.31. We actually averaged the whole PPI and the mean average was 0.31 and anything higher than 0.31, we consider them, them higher pupil index and anything below 0.31, we consider those clusters to be below low uh, pupil density index. And for the public spaces, we only found one in Pasong Makipot. This is only the, the again, with high density and high crowding, wherein we found a lot of Aegis Egypti thriving in the area. For the household survey, which is conducted in 2008, this, this is a summer survey. The first one was done during rainy season. So it's here, for, during summer, if you, if we look at the pupa per person index, it's quite very low, which is probably an indicative that there is a good point before summer wherein we can in initiate control intervention so that the mosquito will not um, propagate that higher. If we can start the intervention, particularly at this point, then probably there's no need for, for an upsurge of growth when the rainy season comes later in the late, uh, as, as the later towards the year. So the, in, in terms of public spaces, it's the same as the first one. There, we, there, we don't find so much, and, there, and uh, there's no highlight, not much highlight. We don't find, found so much uh, ADC chip dye. So these are the key containers found from the 2007 survey, which is rainy season. So the prominent ones are actually um, barrels, constituted of 61.72% out of 1,959 total containers inpe inspected and it followed by, followed by tires and others. These are the disposable containers of which can be sold by uh, throwing them away and um, through, the, through some garbage operation. But if you look at the key containers uh, from private and public spaces during dry season, it would show here that drums would be the only key container during summer. Key container is uh, defined as those containers which harbor pupa, about 85% of all the pupa, pupa collected during a particular survey. So these are the types of the uh, breeding places found, pails and then drums and the tires. And uh, if we would further compare 
the results of the eco-biological -bio survey in terms of the number of households surveyed. So we have for the first wet uh, season, 644 households were surveyed or 75, 77.5% coverage. For dry season, we have only 541, which is equivalent to 65.1. So now the number of water holding containers during rainy season is about 1,365. 95% are found in the household or in, pri in private sp sp uh, spaces. If you look at the dry season, there are more containers found as compared to the wet season because of the tendency to store more water during dry season. So 99.2 in private spaces and 1.3% of the total water holding containers. In terms of the number of household with containers, we have 143 during um, wet season, during dry season, we have only 22. Pupa per person index, we have a mean of 0.46, with, as contrast with 0 0.08. And as I have told you earlier, the key containers varies within season. So if we use, because there was a move uh, by Dana Fox, there, there is a multi-country study done by WHO with the use of pupil density. So the limitation of their particular study is that there are shifts in the type of container per season and per year of collection. And we need a large number of samples for it to be able to um, work or to estimate the actual number of containers to be inspected. So the number of whole water holding containers in public spaces, so it's still less compared to from wet season to dry seasons. Key containers in public spaces, we have here tires and the other ones still drum. And container characteristics associated with higher pupil count. So um, we, we have a number of um, probable uh, factors which of, like the okay, location of the containers which could be associated with the number of uh, pupa which can be found like for the wet season rainwater partially covered with uh, under of overhanging roof or vegetation showed that it has it, it's more preferred by the larva but, but we don't know if it's really the container or it's actually the water quality um, from that that standpoint of view, which is attracting more more um, Aedes aegypti or Aedes albopictus to to breed into, and during dry season, it's basically rainwater with partially shaded and overhanging vegetation. So essentially, they don't want so much sunlight, so they don't wanna be dark, like me. <laughs> Okay, going to the next slide. So it, this is just a summary of the... Sorry. This is just a summary of the cases, rainfall, temperature, and relative humidity. As we can from, found from here, um, there, is, there would be increase in, in um, the number of cases. There's a lag in increase in the number of cases with, before the heavy rains would come. So during dry season, probably we, it's if we can do an exact an experiment which will tell us uh, 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 the right timing and when to focus our, our our control method, then that would be the best time to do it, so that the population we will prevent increase in the population, which will re result to epidemics upon the presence of the dengue viruses in the area. So this is just to show you. This is just to show you the picture of um, the different uh, villages, uh, the different villages where we visited. So the the red square tells us that this is a household with pupa, and the green square, the the rounded green thing there tells that that particular house is actually surveyed. 
So from here, we can pinpoint which houses are actually infested with mosquitoes. This is using a uh, geographical information system. Dr. Salazar, you have another five minutes. Okay. Right, thank you. So for the uh, knowledge, attitude, and practices, focus group discussion and interviews, um, again, there is similarity in terms of knowledge and uh, on the way um, mosquito transmit is transmitted and breeds somewhere. So waste management was through garbage collection and dumping it to specific sites to be later picked up by trucks. So essentially, the, the gist of this slide is that they have a problem in garbage disposal. next so there's also problem in water supply it says there that 81 percent of the household store water 89 percent from the high incidence and high crowding clusters while 50 to 87 percent from high private residential um, residential areas um, Dengue control, pro until 2008, there was no formal dengue control pro programs and activities and includes lectures, cleanup drives, and fogging. And B barangay health workers claim that they are receiving negative treatments from families assigned to them, especially in those areas, from the rich areas, the low density or, or the subdivision areas. And they're complaining of la lazy mothers in depressed areas who doesn't want to do any intervention related to dengue. So we presented this study to the officers of the Homeowners Association and we did some seminars and provided reading materials. And um, they say that they're quite frustrated with the control efforts from the DOH and the City Health Office. And they, they want to, to have incentive as an effective way to, 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 commu to have community involvement. And other problems encountered includes, just like now we just had um, Puli uh, finished uh, election in the Philippines, there's what we call political pol polarization, which um, is observed during meetings that either the ruling or the op opposing group was actually present. And conclusion, I reached a conclusion before the last five minutes. The description of the background of cluster group according to the incidence and crowding are similar but the pupil productivity of the containers in PPI differ. There are focal hotspots per pupa positive water containers. The distribution of these containers, however, is skewed and we need to find out what would be the causes or what would be the actual presence, pre uh, preference for breeding sites. There are seasonal differences in key water holding containers and pupil per person index and the distribution of water holding containers in, in public spaces to pupil productivity during the season is quite important. Sorry, I have to get The knowledge on dengue transmission and prevention are similar in all clusters. However, this will not guarantee a predictable involvement in and response to intervention. So, to conclude, selective intersectoral approaches to dengue vector control aimed at epidemiologically key containers identified by pupil surveys and applied during critical periods of dengue transmission may result in long-term source reduction and um, control. And this is actually what we have found as a recommendation for action and policy to the, na to the city government and to the National Dengue Prevention and Control Program. And with that, thank you, Salam. Thank you very much. Terima kasih.